adaptable to both sides. Oh, you who Ali McKernan here. Hey, I'm going to try and give you guys a few tips for those people at the start of their fungi journey. And fungi can be a bit daunting. You know, there's a lot of them and it can be really niche elements into trying to identify them. So in this video, I shall try and give you some very simple pointers, hints and tips for the start of your journey to better help you identify and find fungi. Okay, tip number one, let's go. Habitats, habitats, habitats. The spaces where fungi grow, put yourselves in them, put them on your radar. The very first number one place that's a wonderful space to be in and your best chance of finding fungi in the autumn, especially woodland. Boom, simple as that. Even better, ancient woodland because there we've got ancient relationships, uh, well-established fungi relationships and habitats and micro habitats within those. So just this wonderful spread of the perfect spaces for most fungi. So your best chance of tripping over them in the autumn. The main reason for the woods being such an optimal place is because you've got lots of mycorrhizal relationships, but deciduous woodland or coniferous, that's what I should be saying, okay? I'll talk about trees later in a second. All right, but those trees are host to loads of great, wonderful fungi. So that's one reason why woods are good. The other is also for all the recyclers, all the dead wood and dead and dying organic matter that needs recycling. And then you've got a whole different host of fungi that do a different role that aren't in symbiosis with trees, but actually rot down and break down the cellulose and lignin in, in trees, turns it back into soil. So actually with all this dead organic rotting matter is another reason why woodland's great because you've got loads of fungi growing with those things too. Okay, number two, unimproved grassland. These are beautiful spaces, usually uplands, usually sheep grazed, and so therefore the grass is short. We're not talking about big, uh, you know, wafty meadows. I don't know what one of those is, but you know what I mean. Big long grass, no, short grass, yes. Wax caps, parasol mushrooms, uh, and a beautiful space to be in. And again, very specific fungi grow there, but they're, they're absolutely gorgeous range. Essentially the wax caps, they're awesome for that. I've just realized I've not got enough time in this video. I've got too much to cover. Let's get straight to the point of, of, of bundling together some accessible spaces. I'm all about accessibility for fungi because they are, they don't discriminate. You can find them all over the place. I've named two big spaces, but do you know what? Think about where you live. And I don't care if you're in a city or if you're in the countryside or if you live on the doorstep of an ancient woodland. Well, that's wonderful, but you can find fungi around you, almost guaranteed. Your garden, your yarden. I don't even have a garden. I have a yarden, half yard. But there's bits of crumbling timbers and you can make a little log pile in it and then you'll find the recyclers coming. So gardens, parks, local parks, fantastic. Here's another one I find a lot in our local park. Here's another one. This is what I mean about urban fungi. Roadside verges. Love a roadside verge. Here's a great example of a roadside find. Roadside verges, we've got bullets, the lurid bullets, the beautiful red netting on the stag. Good in association with the lime trees. Roadside verges. Right now, yesterday, I spotted some beautiful agaricus growing on McDonald's lawn, leisure centre car parks, uh, subway embankments, little grass verges, hedgerows under those, they are around. And if you're looking at those and have them on your radar, you are more likely to see these fungi and then they can be part of your everyday life, which is very exciting, I think so anyway, a wonderful distraction. Fire station, the fire station lawn on the way into work. I know you get some great parasols there underneath some of the conifers, it's great. Fungi are accessible, keep your eyes on these zones. There's a reason why, I'm gonna move on to the next, we've got to do number two. There's a reason why these spaces um, attract fungi and a lot of it is to do with trees. So let's go to the proper number two ways to find and identify fungi. Let's go. Number two, know your trees. I can't tell you how important it is just to learn just some of the fu fundamentals, just some of the, uh, just a good handful of trees. Actually, the handful are important to fungi. There are four big ones I've mentioned before. I'm going to say them again. Are you ready? Birch, beech, pine and oak. Birch, beech, pine and oak. Everybody now. Birch, beech, pine and oak. Birch, beech, pine and oak. They are brilliant as hosts to lots of fungi, okay? They form this symbiosis, this mycorrhizal relationship. Um, and if you have those on your radar, lots of them are in urban settings as well as forests, which is why you can spot them on roadside verges because they're often growing it in association with the trees. Here I'm sandwiched between a nice oak. We've actually got some hazel here. Hazel have mycorrhizal 
fungi associates, a beautiful uh, hazel milk cap, which is the fiery one, which has red hot milk. That's a side note, I just couldn't help but mention it. Um, I've got some hornbeam up there, some beech just there. But yeah, they're your four big ones. When I say pine, generally coniferous in general, but I love to spot a pine. Good example, I'm going off on a tangent, I do apologize. Um, local garden center, there's a little string of pine and a little next to the car park. And yeah, always find fun under there. Know your trees. If you spot a mushroom in the ground, look up. Whether you're on a roadside verge or in a woods, what trees are in the vicinity? Because that could be a massive clue as to what the fungus is that's beneath you. Tip number three for identifying fungi. Get personal, get intimate. Get up close and pour over that fungus with your peepers. Okay, for the sakes of discussing fruit bodies, okay, there are many. Balls, crusts, smuts, rusts, slimes, brackets, clubs, okay. But for purposes of the cereal, let's say it's a mushroom, okay? Just, let, just make things a little easier. But whatever it is, have a close look. So let's say it's a mushroom you've got in your hand or in that grass verge or in the woods, wherever you are. Take a good look from top to bottom. So look at the cap, look at the surface of it, look at patterning. Um, we'll talk about texture in a minute. Underneath, gills, then make your way down. So from top to bottom, down the stipe, down to the, um, down to the base. What shapes the stem? Making a good record of all these, you could take notes, but I think we'll do something else that'll make my last tip for this video. Okay, so that's using your peepers. Are you ready? We're gonna do the senses. Number two, what's your second sense? What should we go for? Touch, really important one as well. Have a feel of the cap, for instance. Have a feel, is it uh, shiny and hard? Uh, is it uh, almost furry and fibrillose, like a little bit hairy? Is it glutinous and slimy? Check out, feel that cap, okay? Um, third sense, smell, my favorite of them all. I just love the way that some mushrooms smell. They kick out some incredible pongs. Curry, engine oil, honey, watermelon, cucumber. Amazing, amazing smells. The, the, the breadth of, of, of o -o olifa olifactory, odor. I say odors, olifactory smells is incredible. And you can have two mushrooms, else two things like, not sure, give it a sniff. Whoa, now I know what you are, because, just because of that smell feature, brilliant. We've done three senses, what's the fourth one? Taste, no, taste. <gasps> taste, I'm not really gonna go there on a beginner's um, identification video. I don't think that's a sensible idea to start sticking things in your mouth. But I can't not mention the value in sometimes a little taste test of the milk for instance, on a milk cap, whether it's very hot, or whether it's acrid or mild. Uh, but again, I'm going to leave that so you're a little bit further advanced. I wouldn't advise putting anything in your mouth at a beginner's stage, okay? Not when it comes to fungi. And the fifth one is hearing. Can't really hear any mushrooms. But still, using so many of our senses as part of an experience is just a wonderful thing. Really good for our well-being. One of the pillars, uh, of the foundation pillars for well-being. No wonder I like mushrooms so much. Tip number four, morphology. Get to know the names and the features of all your fungi and your mushrooms. It's not essential you know the names brilliantly, okay, because um, I don't think that's the clincher, but it will help in aid you in your process, and at least then you know what you're looking for as well. So get to understand that some stipes, the stem part, can be hollow, or some could always be fluffy inside, some can be brittle, so some have got the brittle stems, okay. Uh, or we've got the tough shanks, the tough stems. So getting to know the features of the fungus uh, can be a really useful ID tool. Uh, get yourself a good guidebook, jump online, and just start to pick out those different features and get to know some of the different terminology and some of the names and features of fungi. Oh, we've not touched on substrate. I wasn't gonna do a tip five or six. Let's do tip five. So substrate's really important because it may well be growing in the grass or is it growing in leaf litter or is it growing from an old tree stump or is it growing from a, a dead or dying tree so have a good close look at just what the substrate the thing is that the mushroom is growing out of the mushroom or fungus okay to finish take a good photo take good pictures all good notes you can make good sketches and write loads of valuable little um observations that you've made but obviously a photo can be really helpful and most of us these days have that possibility capacity within our phones or have a camera 
but taking a good picture is key don't just take pictures of the tops okay the number of photos i get sent and i'm really happy to help i love to help people id photos but if it's just the top of a mushroom it can be really hard it narrows it down so much as we've explained earlier in the video so get underneath if you can take a picture of the gills get a picture of the stipe okay maybe later you might need a cross section as well if there's an abundance of fungi of that particular mushroom in front of you don't be afraid to take one for learning purposes and that way you can capture all those different angles okay if it's on its own and you're not sure what it is and it could be rare of course maybe just take as many valuable pictures you can in situ good photos guys they could be great for when you get home and you start to cross reference with your different guidebooks and the internet to try and help you get your id the more photos of all the different features you have the better off you'll be cheers well folks that's it from me i hope that's given you a few little clues just a little bit of a, a leg up into the world of fungi and you're finding and identifying of them enjoy your journey guys bye